week and anyone else would be thrilled to do it. Um, and so without further ado, I'll introduce Wendy. Wendy also went to Broward College and got her associates in psychology. And she's had the opportunity to, re to return to Broward College for work. And she's currently a high school recruiter and she is passionate about the well being of others. So, Wendy, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you so much for having me here, and it's great to be here. Um, Coach Monique is the founder of Girl Be You and the mastermind behind Be You, Everyone Else is Taken. The organization is a global girl and woman movement helping empower, educate, and enhance in all works of life, in all walks of life. Monique is a certified coach in empowerment and have many years of experience in corporate America, as well as a strong community leader and advocate. She has also been recognized by Legacy South Florida Magazine as one of Florida of South Florida's most influential and powerful Black professionals of 2020. Monique earned a bachelor's degree in inter interdisciplinary studies from Florida International University and currently in pursuit of her master's in marketing, all while running a nonprofit organization, a trucking company, a corporate career, mother, a wife, and a friend. Through all these endeavors, she has learned to unlock her ability to do whatever her heart desires to do. She doesn't limit herself anymore and is here to help us discover that we are limitless. It is with great honor to introduce Coach Monique, AKA Mo. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my screen prepared, but before we get started, I have to thank um, everyone who has prepared this wonderful opportunity for our young queens. And if we have any young kings on here to hear some empowerment from so many other powerful people that will also be sharing their personal stories um, and achievements and accomplishments. Thank you, Tron specifically, and Colleen Lockwood from Bridge to Life and Jill for helping us get all this together. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I hope everyone is enjoying the screen there because it's time to have a seat on the couch together. Because today we are going to discuss her story, which is also your story. But the most important thing, we're going to learn the importance of just having a story. Unlike math, reading and English were honestly some of my favorite subjects. And I just love the fact that books are written from the author's perspective, but are yet so uniquely adaptable to the individual readers themselves. Now today, I want to encourage you to define who is the author of your story? Is your story even being written yet? Have you sat down to consider what your storyline should look like? I want you to understand the importance of your life journey and the power that you have in your life's outcome. There is no identical life story on any shelf. And I think it's quite time now that we normalize and embrace the beauty of our own individual copyrights. Yes, we should all think of ourselves as valuable copywritten material. There is simply too much room in the world to endorse a copycat mindset. As to why today, I hope that you are encouraged to embrace yourself unapologetically. And if my young queens are on here, purr, because being your own author and being able to create your own story is a beautiful thing. Now, as someone said, my slogan is be you because everyone else is taken. And this fits so well when we think about your personal journey or your life story. Books, just like our lives, can all have the same similar plots, same characteristics, same titles, and so forth. But at the end of the day, they are all uniquely made to tell the story from what? The author's perspective. How others perceive or receive your story, well, guess what? That's entirely up to them. And I want to encourage you to not waste your time trying to figure out why people receive your story the way they do. So please don't waste unnecessary time or energy trying to make someone else happy at your expense. 
Now, so much time, like I said, is wasted on this, but if only I could have had someone remind me to embrace that mindset early on, I would have saved myself from a lot of unnecessary, unemotional setbacks. And today I'm encouraging you to please embrace that mentality because everything is captured on social media, right? But your online persona is not a true representation of your actual story. It goes so much deeper than the images that you capture or the messages or the funny memes that we all love to post because your story begins with learning about yourself, not what is going to attract or get likes, comments, followers, or what we like to call in the marketing world, vanity metrics. Your story is like any other new book that is waiting to be published as a bestseller because it requires you to define and develop the main character, which is you. Now, have you truly taken the time to understand who you are, why you do certain things? Why did you make a particular decision that now you might be questioning yourself on? Are you on that path that was defined by someone else or are you learning to be your own author? Now, there are so many people in the world that are no longer with us that left their stories to be written by someone else. I challenge you to give yourself the power to control your narrative. Write your journey, write your story, either write a book for real, and I really mean that because I am also an author and anyone this day can write a book or start to utilize self-journaling as your story so that you can understand and define your narrative. But often, this thing called life happens, right, to all of us. And, you know, some of us, I know I've got some adults on here, we end up in positions that, you know, we find ourselves just surviving versus thriving. And the one commonality, I believe, of survivors or the survivor syndrome are simply blank pages that were left in these books, which ultimately allowed someone else to dictate a person's individual story. I mean, there are enough followers in the world and there are enough, there just are not enough people who are living their best life, are living and meeting their highest potential because they were not intentional about the pages and the story of their future. The world desperately needs you. You, yes, you, I'm not talking to anybody else, you. The world needs you because there's something unique about you. You know, as we celebrate this month and it's women's celebratory, uh, you know, the theme is choose to challenge. When I think about choose to challenge, I encourage everyone listening, choose to challenge by not falling victim to who or what the world thinks you should be and focus on developing yourself Self because you are your main character. Now, if we think about a book, the development stage of a main character is very similar to how you can look at yourself and your personal goals in your life right now. You know, stories are rarely written without an idea about the main character. After all, the main character is what? The star of the show, right? So if you are the star of your show, then this applies to you today, not tomorrow, not in two weeks, but today. Think about the life that you desire and create your story around it. Live it, think it, and be intentional about it. When other characters, because this will happen, when other characters or situations try to enter your story plot, you can only allow them to change your narrative if you give them the power to. That is why it is beauty in the ability to narrate and create your own story. Think about it. What author gives characters the ability to tell their story? They may act well, but at the end of the day, the story is still being told from the view of the author. Now, your goals, once you understand them, will help you to understand what your outline and your plan should be. Now, I'm sure you're like, Coach Mo, I have heard this over and over again. I am so tired of hearing, I need to have a plan. But I promise you, when you have a true outline of what you want from life, you will begin to create your goals and understand also how to set boundaries. As we think about things that have happened to women, especially with the inequality that we still continue to face, it is hard for us as women to even understand boundaries because we are often so, so, so many times asked to be 
nice or a certain defined message is supposed to come from women. But we are allowed to set boundaries, but only when you understand what those appropriate boundaries are. And you can't discover them if you have not taken the time to A, understand who your character is and an outline so that you can understand where you're trying to go in life. Now, I want you to enjoy your life, though. I don't want you to think this is all about just making sure you have this perfect plan because we know what happens sometimes with plans. Plans always have different detours or journeys that you'll have to go on. But I encourage you to embrace every challenge that you will encounter because as I understand the butterfly effect, even the smallest, even the smallest moment or movement that you do can seriously cause a typhoon effect in the future for either you or someone else's life. Now, there's a benefit of being able to understand and control your narrative. You actually get to understand what I like to call non-negotiables. You have to have non-negotiables in life because anything that doesn't deserve or serve a purpose to help you on your journey can cause people to add what I like to call their two cents or sticky notes on your page. Now, it is your goal and your job to protect the pages of your story at all costs. Because remember, you are writing the next bestseller and the world is waiting on you. I want you to enjoy life, not to just go through life with tons of questions. You have to have some type of understanding of where you are going. I strongly believe having an idea of how you want your story to be written is the key. Notice I didn't say you have to have a full book written because in life, those pages and series are going to change. But I do encourage each and every one of you that are listening to just please, please take some time to have an idea of how you see your best-selling life published book on the shelf. Having a plan gives you true power that is often overlooked and it also provides clarity. The other benefit is being comfortable, okay? You are allowed to be comfortable in the things that you do. And I challenge you to also clear your mind of the word can't and replace it with the word can. I know it sounds real simple, right? But we often unconsciously find ourselves talking ourselves out of so many things because that word can't just sound so much easier, right? Because the word can't is going to require work, effort, consistency, dedication, and it's going to require you to have to maybe juggle a couple of things. As someone mentioned, I have many, many different businesses that I currently run. And yes, I'm sometimes tired, but I have too much that I need to offer to the world to feel that it's time for me to rest right now. I'll rest when I know I continue to touch as many hearts as I can. Learn to understand no matter the cards that you may be dealt because we're all dealt a certain deck of cards in life. You can still play the game to win, but you won't be able to play the game to win until you understand the clear out clutter to find clarity and build your confidence. Leave nothing to chance because you have the ability to make choices, okay? Can you see your book? I, I, can you see that book, that bestseller book on the shelf that has your picture, your name, your story, your testimony? I need you to visualize it and see it because once you see it, once you understand the power of leaving something written, a mark in history, a book, something so important, you know, her story is, yes, about everyone's story, but I encourage people to please document your journey. Don't leave your journey to be documented in a eulogy. And a lot of people who are no longer here, unfortunately, have their best, their best stories told by someone else. Don't leave it to chance when you have the opportunity to do that yourself. Identify a career in your story. Start thinking about the career that's going to help you be happy in your life. Everything is not about money. And if it was, then the people who always seem to obtain tons of it would be living the most glamorous life. But we all know with money comes a lot of problems if you don't have a financial mindset that's healthy and that understands the difference between needs and wants. So be intentional about your future and see your future in the story that you decide to write 
no one else. And I do have a couple of call to action notes here that I wanna leave you with briefly. Schedule some time for reflection. We live a busy, busy life, but there is no excuse for you to not have identified time to spend with yourself. If you spend time with anyone else and you don't remember sitting down saying, I need to just hear me. I need to speak to me. I need to look at me. I need to make sure I'm on the same page of where I see myself going. That's something that you need to incorporate today. Find a mentor. Um, I'm not a mentor. And I like to tell people and they say, well, Coach Mo, why are you not a mentor? Mentors, I tell you, they are wonderful and beautiful and dedicated people. Mentors have the ability to take the time to nurture you from one stage to the next. Coaches are cheerleaders who are going to help you help you discover your greatest potential. OK, so understand the difference between finding a coach, finding a mentor and finding a sponsor. A sponsor is going to be someone who's going to help navigate and network on your behalf. They're going to speak to that next person because they have the circle of influence that you need to help make an entry, entryway into whatever field or endeavor you're trying to get into. Invest in valuing you because you are a bestseller in the making. Set your goals, secure the bag, but most importantly, be you because everyone else is taken. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it, turn this back over to Jill because we are going to hear from some phenomenal queens. I have seen all of their um, energy that they're bringing onto the screen. And listen, don't stop us in the middle of the street to ask questions when you got us all right here. There are no questions that we're not ready and prepared to help you grow and be you. Thank you, everyone. So thank you so much, Mo. That was incredible. Uh, the blank pages turning and everything else that was really interesting. So um, now I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. Um, and it says, would you like to unmute? Am I muted? Oh, OK. Very good. All right. So getting back to the screen, we are now going to hear from five of our BC alumna. And again, authenticity is key. I love the way you think, Mo, that we all have to be our authentic selves. And so we are going to ask these successful people. We have a registered nurse, a child care director, a pilot, a mental health counselor, and a higher education advisor. Just to tell us, how did they get from point A to point B? What were some of their academic and personal challenges and overcoming obstacles? So we're, we'll go through the five and then we are gonna go into breakout rooms, which is gonna be really fun. We have three different topics and the alumna and uh, Coach Mo and I will each be in the breakout room with you. So without further ado, our first alumna is Catherine Kirk and I'll let you, um, Introduce yourself. She is a registered nurse at Broward Health and she's done some incredible things. She's been on Channel 7. So without further ado, Catherine, why don't you introduce yourself and, and tell your her, tell your her story? There we go. I think I'm unmuted. And thank you so much, Jill, for having me here as well as the alumni. And thank you, Coach Mo, for sharing uh, your history. And so a little bit about myself. I uh, grew up in California and I went to college there. I got my bachelor's degree in psychology. I graduated in 2001 with that. Really didn't know the direction I was going to go, but found myself um, going into the corporate world. And when I moved to Florida, I got a job working in a travel nurse staffing agency, really doing um, housing for the travel nurses and kind of found myself there for a while, had a lot of interaction with nurses. And it was during that time that I really decided I don't want to sit behind a desk for the rest of my life. I need to be doing something more. And I realized that what was important to me was really giving back and connecting with people. So in 2015, after speaking with my family, I had the wonderful opportunity 
to stop working and actually start nursing school. Um, it was a very challenging time. Um, I did start going to Broward College. At the time I was a single mom. So I was doing the mom thing and doing the nursing school thing. And the two are both very challenging, especially when they're together. But I did have a lot of support from family and friends and I was able to be very successful. And something that I did while I was in nursing school was I actually actually became the uh, nursing club president at Broward College. So um, I had originally wanted to just get involved and it was, we need a, a president of the nursing club. And so I found myself there, which was absolutely amazing. So during my time in nursing school, I was able to really um, give back and work on a lot of um, projects in the community and, and really have a very involved time in nursing school. After I graduated, I um, knew that I really wanted to go into women and children's in terms of my nursing. And I was able to get a dream job working in pediatric hematology and oncology. So I have been a registered nurse in pediatric hem hematology and oncology at Broward Health for the last um, almost four years. And it is one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. I love the kids and families we take care of. And most recently in the beginning of January, my fiance and I started a Facebook group, the South Florida COVID-19 vaccine info group, where we have helped thousands of people get information as to how to register and get the vaccine. On our Facebook group, we have 35,000 people and we have a team of volunteers. And so in addition to the nursing, I have found another way to really channel what I'm passionate about. And it has been an amazing experience and I hope to keep doing more. Well, thank you so much. I know that was amazing that we found you on channel seven and that you did go to Broward College and we're very proud to highlight you as one of our alumna. So next, we have Stephanie, which is um, an excellent uh, role model for many. She runs a uh, child care operation center. Uh, it's called Griffin Harbor. She's the assistant director. So Stephanie, why don't you tell us a different journey than nursing? Let's hear about uh, education. Hi, everyone. So my story started in high school. I knew taking a career technical class that I wanted to be early childhood. What that was exactly, I didn't know till I started doing it, which was pretty much giving the children foundations going into elementary school, all those life skills and education skills. And then I went from there. I started that when I was 15. That's this August will be 14 years I've been in the field and I've seen it change a lot. And I was lucky enough to be at a preschool center that wanted me to continue my education and grow because prior to that, I was at some centers that, you know, didn't want to see you succeed. And I was not for that. I knew what I wanted. And I was lucky enough to have a really great director. And she pushed me to go to Broward College. That's where I graduated with my associate. And now I actually have fellow coworkers who I encourage to go get their education because they're saying, you know, oh, I'm too old to go back. I said, no, you're not. I was, I was 26 when I went back to college. I didn't go straight to high, I didn't go out of high school straight into college. I waited a few years and, you know, I had a little self-doubt because I was already older. There were skills I don't remember using, but BC was really great. I did have some life events happen during my time at BC. I got married. I also lost my mother during my time at BC, but luckily the, all the educators were very understanding and helped me through to complete everything. And right now we are still, you know, during the pandemic, during COVID, I'm still teaching. I am actually in person. Um, it's a little weird to have my students with face shields and face masks because, you know, that takes away from social emotional, but I have a lot of parents who are grateful we are still open because some don't have family members to help take care of their kids. Some are single parents. Some, their jobs are not very understanding. They're very grateful that we're still open. And I'm very grateful I'm still able to give them that learning safe space and have their parents know, oh, my child is safe. They're learning and they're having fun. And I enjoy what I do. So that is my story. Well, thank you. Yes, that is a great story. And I'm so glad you were able to go on and get your AS and, and become a, a director at that center. I know 
when we did the Facebook posts and all that, we did get so many compliments. You're very, very well loved there. So thank you so much. And next we have Courtney Crane, uh, another very accomplished alumna. She is a pilot with UPS and she went on and got her bachelor's and her master's in the UK. So Courtney, why don't you tell us, it must have been challenging to be a pilot and go through your story with us, your, her story. Yes, hi, thank you. Welcome everybody. Um, absolutely, I never saw myself doing something like this. I was not a science, technology, engineering or math student at all. As you can see, I had an English degree. Um, but I ended up uh, after my degree in English um, enrolling in the uh, Emil Bueller Aviation Institute from 2005 to 2007 at Broward College. And uh, that absolutely changed my life. Um, my biggest uh, obstacle, of course, was money. I didn't have it. <laughs> um, and I know for a lot of people that can be a big uh, challenge. Um, so what I did, I worked part time. I was a flight attendant for Spirit Airlines. Uh, I would bid the red eye trips and then study on the trips, sleep in my car and go to class. I did as many classes online as I could. That was huge. Uh, Dave Ramsey, uh, financially, I would highly suggest his books. You can get them for free at the library. Um, and that helps manage your money budget. Scholarships, grants, I applied to as many as I could. Those help. Uh, military service, that's another one. Um, if you join the military, uh, even just for several months, you can still get money off your, uh, your flight training or anything. Three years gets 100% paid for. Minimize debt, be uncomfortable, be willing to be uncomfortable. I drove a junk car. I lived in a tiny, tiny little room that I was renting from somebody. Um, I never went out. All my entertainment was books from the library, but I knew that this is what I had to do to get my goal. Uh, it's a very male dominated industry. Uh, 4% of pilots at this level are female. Fewer than 1% of pilots at this level are BIPOC female. It's extremely important to get us out there to say, just because most people don't look like us doesn't mean we cannot do it. We absolutely can. I suffered from uh, imposter syndrome as, as a result of that, just thinking maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I shouldn't be here, stop it. You are good enough, you can be there. Um, I took every opportunity that, and I looked for opportunities. I studied extremely hard. Um, as a result, I, I made sure that I did tough jobs, jobs nobody else wanted to do. Um, it, it was hard for, for a few years, I'll be honest. It, it, wasn't, it was not easy, but as a result of taking those sacrifices on the front end of it, I was able to get a job. Um, it's, uh, I fly the largest airplane in the world for the highest paying company in the world. And I get to travel the world for my job and it's absolutely wonderful and absolutely worth it. So I would suggest the keys to success exactly like uh, Coach Mo said, get a mentor, that is number one. Getting a mentor is so important. Um, they will help guide you uh, to not make the mistakes that they did, point you in the right direction. Uh, you can find a mentor through professional organizations uh, and networking with them. I would say, don't just take from them, add value to your mentor because you don't want to say, what can you teach me? And that's it. You want to say, what can I do for you? Because that will make them want to help you more. Can you create a website for them, for their business? Can you offer to work in the office, file paperwork, whatever? You all have a skill that you can do to help your mentor. And in turn, you can get information from them that'll excel your career. Um, set a clear goal, whatever it is, look at what it looks like and then work backward from there. So if your goal, like for me, it was to be a pilot for a large airline flying the biggest airplane. That was my goal. I created a vision board. Um, that's all I talked about to people. I put that energy out there into the universe and that's what I got back. It took a while, but I did not give up. So Focus on your goal. Be flexible. It may not look like, in the end, what you wanted it, the goal, but be flexible, um, open to change. It's okay to fail. If you are not failing, uh, something's wrong because it means you're not trying. You're not putting yourself out there and forgive yourself. Uh, never give up resilience, number one. Thank you so much. Wow, that was re really, really empowering, Courtney. Congratulations. That Thank was you. Beautiful. And next we have Ms. Pope 
who uh, brought some girls on from the Peace Center and she got her AS at Broward College as well as her BS from UCF and her master's at NOVA. So why don't you tell us what it's like being a therapist and working in the mental health field, especially in these times? Yes, for sure. Thank you for having me on. I wanted to share um, my her story as well. Um, I, I that was just awesome, awesome, um, Courtney. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay, I'm not listening. <laughs> My name is Christia Pope, and I am one of the family therapists of the Family Strengthening Program at Pace Center for Girls, a Broward location. Um, I'm, like was, as was said, I'm a Broward Community College alumni, and I have to say community because back then, BCC or Broward College, as you have it now, did not offer bachelor's degrees back then. I found myself at Broward College because in high school, I graduated from Pompano Beach High School. Um, I didn't have the grades, nor the GPA, nor the test scores to get into a school where I could obtain my bachelor's degree because they didn't offer it like way back then. <laughs> um, I remember speaking to my high school guidance counselor and him telling me about something called a two plus two and the two plus two if I remember correctly was where if a student obtained an associate's degree from a Broward college or any community college then they um, then the state college had to accept them or at least look at their college transcript. That's how it was in Florida. I'm not sure about any other state. I remember being so thankful and so grateful for my guidance counselor and sharing that information and opportunity with me because I knew as well as he did, my grades and my SAT, ACT scores and my GPA going straight into a state college was not in the stakes for me. Long story short, I graduated with my associate's degree from Broward College. I then used that associate's degree and transferred to the University of Central Florida where I received my bachelor's degree. It allowed me to become a Head Start teacher for the Broward County School Board. I now have my master's degree from Nova Southeastern University in mental health counseling where I serve a population of girls who are a lot like me and how I was in high school. Learning differently, struggling to keep their grades up and their GPA up, experiencing test-taking anxiety and social anxiety from their peers, all the while handling home life and its stresses. I'm really thankful that Broward College now offers bachelor's degrees because had they offered that back then, especially in education, I believe I would have stayed. Broward College offered me another chance at raising my grades, raising my GPA, and learning to take responsibility for my academics, my career, and myself. Their academic advisors and guidance counselors are absolutely amazing, as is the school. They really care for us, and they aim to make a positive difference in my life. Um, thank you for allowing me to share that story. Wow, that is amazing. Congratulations, and you do so much for so many. So thank you for sharing all that. And last but certainly not least, uh, Sheila Jones. She is a dynamo. You'll hear her from her in one minute. Um, she got her AA at Broward College, her BA in criminal justice at FAU, and then she's working on completing her second master's. And she's a great one to follow on Facebook because she's super, super positive and super accomplished. So Sheila, we'll let you tell your story quickly so we can go into the breakout rooms, but please have Anna, can't wait to hear from you. You can always put on the speaker view at the top, what, instead of the gallery, if you wanna be able to see the speakers, you can use one of those other buttons. So thank you, Sheila, look forward to hearing from you. Yes, hi everyone. Thank you very much, Jill, as always, always including me in different seminars and different talks. And I'm always like, you know, changing my schedule just to meet those needs. Um, I want to first say thank you, Coach Mo. I was like this, bopping my head, like, yes, yes, I do tell my story, Jill, you know it. You are your um, Facebook friend of, of mine as well, as well as LinkedIn. So I'm always super, like, you know, excited and I'm very transparent. Um, I briefly shared a story that Jill did not know. When I was in high school, um, ninth grade, I felt the ninth grade. Um, I didn't feel the, um, the year per se because I was allowed to go to night school and make it up. But my credits were so you know, short that by the time I get to 12th grade, I won't be able to graduate. So I did make up a whole year of ninth grade and I was able to graduate with my class, class of 1995 from Miami Central. I was always considered a student uh, as a dropout student. My grades were very poor. 
I did not um, take um, the test to get into college. I didn't even have a zeal or desire to go to college. I just wanted to go out and just start working. Um, I decided to get into college because I worked at a company for 10 years and was laid off. Um, from being laid off, it prompted me to sit down inside of my bed, just like how Coach Mo said, I had this vision that God gave me, like, you need to get yourself together. You need to write that book. You need to go ahead and set those goals and you need to go after it. My son was like maybe four years old. I was divorced by that time. And I said, well, you know what? Let me call Bravo College. And I called the Central Campus and I said, what do I need to do to get into college? Because I will no longer work for anyone without a college degree. And they told me what I need to do. I applied for financial aid. Um, the key with that is I had a two point, I think I was so close to the point that my GPA was very low that I almost didn't get financial aid. This is how bad, like, I guess leaving out of high school, I barely made it. And the guy from financial aid says to me, we're going to work something out for you. And I said, okay. And I didn't know what that meant. And I went to class and I took two classes because I was scared, 13 years out of school, coming back at 35 years old. I was in college with like students that was 20 years old, 19. But you know what? Like Coach Mo said, I had that goal and I want to stick to it and I want to make something out of myself. And before you know it, I became, I became an honor student. I was a vice president of Phi Data Kappa. I ended up working for Broward College part-time while I was a student. And I transferred into um, Florida Atlantic University. And uh, as a criminal justice major, I graduated with a 3.71 GPA. I decided that while working at Broward College part-time, I wanted to know what was I was doing in academic center. And my manager said, there's a uh, master's prog program that FIU has that's called Master's in Higher Ed Administration. You should apply. And I applied and I got in. And I said, I want to become an advisor because Broward College was the foundation that set the tone for me. That advisor walked me through and helped me out. And, you know, like you said, you had that coach, that mentor. I can email her anytime and she would answer me. And I would never forget Broward College. And so I, after that, I became a teacher for two and a half years. Didn't want to stay in the K-12 area. And I said, I'm going to set my goal this last year and sought out to work for Broward College. And I kept applying, kept applying. Finally, in January, I was hired in, um, at Broward College. I currently work there now. And I love my position. I'm working with at-risk students, um, mothers who are trying to go back to school, and also fathers, single fathers going back to school. And I'm completing my second master's in higher ed administration. Oh my gosh. Well, I bet that they walk away feeling so motivated and pumped up from you that you make their day better. And all five of you are incredible. Thank you so much. But now we have a lot of fun. The next thing, we're going to jump into our breakout rooms. Um, so in order, we'll do five minutes. It's 540. So we'll do five minutes uh, in each breakout room. The first one is going to be discussing networking and relationships. And then the second one will be uh, the discussion about securing the bag. And then the third one will be the goal setting. So before we start each breakout room, we'll go back to the topic. But the main thing when you get in the breakout room, just say your name and like where you're from, you know, where you go to school or where you work. So everybody can identify each other. And then we'll talk about the power of networking and relationships as it relates to you. And also the mentors in the room can discuss some stories there. So. Holiday, can you put us in our breakout rooms? So everybody should get a note to join a breakout room in there and then we'll come back when it's over. So please join your breakout room. So where is my breakout room? Uh-oh. Uh, I don't know if I got moved. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I think it assigned us to the breakout rooms. I think I missed, I think I missed my prompt. So if someone. I, I, I assigned you, but I can only assign people who are not 
in a room kind of thing. You know what I mean? Okay, so I can move around, or do we still? Have you people? should. You should be able to go to your. Your. You were, I believe, assigned to room. I thought you were assigned to room two. Two. Okay. I, will I go, think. Um, I will go over to two. I think it is. Okay. I'm not sure what room I'm supposed to be in. Yeah, you're in. Yeah, she was. Okay. Um. What room? What's your name? Melinda. Melinda Ball. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, hold on. Oh, now it popped up. Okay. Yeah. got to wait for everyone else to get back in. <laughs> Am I still sharing my screen or no? Um, you're on my screen, like my main screen. I think no, that's I you're talking. A slide, right? No, I don't see a slide. So when everybody comes back on, do you see the slide for breakout room two? Yes. yes. So everybody's gonna finish up in their breakout room and then we'll, we'll go. Did you get a pot, was there a notification or did it say that the room- had 56 seconds to leave. Okay, good. Cause I didn't know if I had to type it or if it would be like department of redundancy department, you know what I mean? So oh, I, didn't, wow. I didn't put a notice. I think we're back now. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> oh, we, were, we were getting it. We were getting it. <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> was worried that would happen. Uh, Jill, what do you, Jill, instead of doing a breakout, do you want to just allow everyone just to stay on here since we have time? Sure, would every, would everybody's preference. Is that your preference, Coach Mo? You lead it, you're the- I mean, I, I, listen, I, there's some phenomenal women on here. I'm missing out what they're saying too. And I'm a lifetime learner. So yeah, let's let's keep it on here. And um, okay. let's, let's hear from some people who talk bag. about securing the bag, like, you okay. know. You how, go, how do you do that? Okay. Do you want to call on people and they can unmute the people? I don't know if we have that raise your hand feature here. I think any queen willing to talk. How, how did you all decide how to secure your bag? Well, I think you, does anybody want to, you have to call on people. Who's willing to tell the story? Um, 
you know what? I want to hear from Queen Courtney because somebody in just her, said Jeanette. In, in her field, I think that it should be told about securing the bag, how you did that, and also understanding your salary and did you negotiate and things of that sort. What's so wonderful about this field of work is that there is no negotiating salary. I get paid the exact same as a man does. We don't have to deal with that whole 70 cents on the dollar here. And um, I, I knew that that was a motivation for me. It, it definitely, it's a very expensive career. Um, it, I will not lie about that. It costs a lot of money, but in order to mitigate that, considering I was, I was paying for it myself, uh, like I said, I was extremely uncomfortable. I lived well below my means. I think that's a huge the reason why people can't get to the level in their careers that they want to is because they have not been uncomfortable enough to live extremely well below their means. Uh, a lot of the guys couldn't take that next step because they said, well, I can't afford to take the pay cut. Well, I'm sorry, find a way. Um, I lived on uh, Chipotle. No, sorry, that's extra for guac. So I, I mean, I, I was living on right. I literally rice and beans for, for about two years. Um, just driving an old clunker, not making much money at all, but everything I made, I put toward that training. And then when I started making money, I continued living well below my means and started repaying the loans with that money. Um, and also taking side hustles all the time. I'll be honest, I was exhausted, but it's worth it because I think that the more you sacrifice on the front end, the more it gives you the freedom on the, on the other end, exactly. So um, because I, 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 I sort of sucked it up for many years in the beginning, while all my friends were going out having a great time, spending money on this, that, and the other, and I couldn't, now I'm in a position where I can do whatever I want and I don't have debt. So it worked. <laughs> I love that queen. I love that. I love that. That is so true, guys. I mean, I am a professional in the bank. I work for Comerica Bank. I talk about financial education. You, you, you're you, on here with Broward College. Tron and Broward uh, Bridge to Life are advocates for scholarships. So please make sure you're signed up to always hear about the opportunity to pay for your college. We've got another queen, Queen Jeanette. Um, let's hear from you. How did you secure the bag? You're on mute, Queen. There you oh go. Oh my goodness. It's I'm sorry, I'm on my cell phone. Apologize. So um, Jeanette McGee, I currently work in the IT department at Broward College, but I was also the associate dean of advising at Central. I have um, oof, I've worked in higher education for over 20 years. And one of the things I did was um, I, I looked to see who else can pay for my education. Looked for creative ways, applied for scholarships. I've mentored, I don't know how many students. If, if I do nothing else in this world, my legacy in helping to fuel so many amazing young people's careers and their paths and helping to diversify the STEM pipeline because I was an engineering and computer science advisor for much of my career. And so I advocated for students who didn't typically have, um, you know, weren't, weren't encouraged necessarily to think beyond um, and, and, and be encouraged to investigate new options and opportunities. So I served as their mentor in guiding them through that higher ed process, through the professional development process and launching their careers and then handing them off to see more seasoned mentors in their fields. And so one of the things that I, the knowledge as a first generation student that I shared with them was always think beyond just what are you learning in the classroom and how, what is it that you're learning with, from other people, other opportunities in your life? Um, and, and how do you leverage that as your um, niche? What makes you, you? and unique. And, um, and so I always encourage my engineering students, you don't want to just be an engineer, you want to be an engineer who has a broader perspective of the society and understanding of the society needs and problems and how that knowledge and the way you think and your heart and your passion can help be of service to the world. And once you do that, and I've served that model in my career as well. And once you do that, the career trajectory, the opportunities, the money, the fulfillment, 
manifests itself typically. But one of the things I had to do as a woman in a male dominated world, um, having worked in engineering colleges um, throughout the country is that I had to trust my intuition. I had to trust my own journey and timetable for things beyond my professional life that um, I did or did not want to pursue or achieve. You know, it, you're, you're the best judge as to what timetable and if you want to be married, if you want to have children, you know, things of that nature and to, to learn how to build that empowerment to advocate for your decision-making capability and, um, and, and be open to change and opportunities and, and trust yourself to, to guide your decision-making process as to your risk level and being able to seize those opportunities and that ability to change. Wow, thank you so much, Queen. I really appreciate that. So um, do we have any other people? I mean, like, I'll tell you me personally, how I like to secure the bag. I'm intentional because I know the life that I would like to continue to live. And without me knowing the amount of money that I want to keep and earn and secure for my future, I'm not going to be able to continue to wear all the animal print that I love to wear and things of that sort. So, you know, securing the bag is knowing to have passive income, um, having multiple streams of having multiple streams of income, allowing money to, you know, come to you while you're asleep. So that takes you know, intention, but once again, it also takes time for you to sit down and figure those things out. What are you really good at? Someone told me this and it hit me like, oh, it just hit me. If a company's willing to pay you $90,000 a year, just imagine how much you're really, really, really worth. So I challenge each one of my young queens that might be, you know, listening to this because, you know, you haven't really decided where you want to be on your journey yet. Um, but you can decide how to get there and be intentional about it. So you've heard all of these stories and I'm telling you, I am so attached to every last one of these stories. I did not have the SAT, ACT scores. I went to Santa Fe Community College and that I'm going to, it was called a community college. You know, they, they understood the same, you know, education that co community colleges give is e equal to a regular college. So I'm glad that they finally changed that. Um, language for community college to just a college, but you know it just goes to show no matter the the trials and triumphs that any of us have have faced that you've heard, we've all somehow made it a point to overcome it. We're not going to allow any excuse, any setback, any person, any broken heart to to tell us that we can't be where we want to be. Nothing defines you but you. Um, in the last workshop, we were talking about the power of networking. I have to share this story because it's so important. Um, I am an advocate on LinkedIn. I share everything that I do on LinkedIn. And I know a lot of my young queens and kings, they're not, they're not on LinkedIn because they want to TikTok their life away and you know Snapchat, Instagram. But if you are intentional about having a professional career, I strongly encourage you to take down every last one of these names that are on the screen are put somehow that you can go and find these people on LinkedIn and connect with them. The power of LinkedIn is so powerful. I never in my life thought that I would ever be speaking to Tesla. Little old Coach Mo has already confirmed and delivered a workshop to Tesla, a Fortune 500 company speaking to their women. And guess how that came? From LinkedIn, from me speaking to my professors I am currently at FIU pursuing my master's degree. My professor believed in me because I was never shy. My professors knew my love, they knew my journey. And out of the blue, my professor referred me to Tesla. And Tesla reached out to me via LinkedIn and said, we are interested in, in you delivering some empowerment motivation um, during Women's Celebration Month to choose the challenge. I have now been asked to come back to Tesla. So when I tell you, no one can define you but you, but you have to be intentional. And I know I could talk, Tron, I'm sorry. I'm gonna open it back up for anyone else because I think they're allowing us to go over if any other queens want to just uh, talk about goal setting, short-term goals. If I could show you the picture, and at seven or eight years old, I have a picture where I was a Miss, Miss Fashionetta contestant for AKAs. 
And I said, at eight years old, I was gonna be a famous dancer and be on the stage. And guess what? The world is now my stage. I turned the world into my stage because I still talk and speak to so many people and help change lives. So it just goes to show, even at eight years old, I was already kind of trying to figure my path out. So do not disregard the little heart in you that still wants to be something. Because even though I wasn't wanted by my father, I wasn't wanted by my stepfather, I had two fathers who did not want me. But guess what? At the end of the day, I learned to want me. I learned to cheerlead for me because now there are other little girls that need that same encouragement. So I'm gonna turn it back over to any other queens that wanna tell uh, their story on goal setting, short-term goals and long-term goals. Well, I think that you are so powerful <laughs> that I think we'd love to end it on a note from you because that was really beautiful. Congratulations on Tesla. That is incredible. So we want to continue to hear more. We will all friend you on LinkedIn. I know on our alumni spotlight page, when you click on the alums, we have, you can go right to their LinkedIn and we have all the different pathways, health, uh, STEM, as Jeanette said, uh, all the different pathways there. So I encourage you all to go on the Broward College alumni page in our spotlights. And then, as I mentioned, we have those live interviews. So you can hear Sheila's whole story. And uh, I'll get Christia and Courtney. I want to get it all down, recorded for there forever. So thank you all so much for coming. This was amazing. I feel very empowered personally being a woman and this kind of an environment where you share everyone's really strong success and being together and bonding together for the greater good. So thank you, Coach and Mo, anything like you wanna say a closing remark? I close out with the same thing, be you because everyone else is taken. Choose the challenge, choose yourself, embrace courageous conversations Let's see that best-selling book you're going to write. I'm ready. Are you ready? I hope y'all ready. Thank Get you. Get pages out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This was amazing. Yes, thank Very. you, ladies. Thank you, everybody. I, I just connected with Coach Mo. Thank I'll you. Send the, I'll send the recording out as well to everyone, okay. and it'll be on our website. So thank you all again. Thank Go make some dinner or... Yep. Whatever you need to do. It's been a long day, I'm sure. Yep. For I have class. Fry up the bacon. Bring home the bacon. Fry it up in a pan. Yes. <laughs> and that, thank you for your story. Courtney, too. Beautiful. Oh, and too thank you very much. Cool. Likewise. And keep shining, ladies. Keep shining. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.